Regional prompting is a great way to achieve control over your AI-generated compositions. This can be done by selecting areas and prompting each specifically, especially since this can be done with the new Flux models to get even higher quality outputs. In this video, I will go through how you can take full control over your image composition using these multi-area conditioning nodes. First, to get the installation out of the way, you will need to install this custom node called Dave. At the moment, this is not available from the Comp UI manager, so you need to clone it from the GitHub repo into your custom nodes folder. If you go to this link, which I'll provide in the description below, you can see an overview and instructions on how to install. I'm using the Pinocchio app here, so your directory might look a little different, but copy this git clone command, click in the file explorer on the top bar, and type cmd. Then paste in this command, and it will install. You can then confirm that it's all complete by going into this folder, and you'll appear here. Over in the comfy UI, just make sure you update and restart everything so that it works. I'll begin by showing you the main multi-area conditioning nodes and how they work. Search and add multi-area conditioning. And along with this goes the clip text encoder. Just make sure you select the flux version, not the standard, and simply connect these up. The first prompt is the general prompt for the whole scene. Beneath this, you then add additional prompts for regions within this main scene. You can add these sub prompts by right clicking and selecting insert input below. Then add as many nodes as you want to condition. In my case, I will add three areas. Then to match these, let's copy three text prompts and move them down. These then link back to the multi area conditioning node in the same fashion. Within this node, you have a space to set the areas. You can select which prompt applies to which area by switching the indices down here. So you can see the prompts highlight as you move from one index to the next. Index 0, or the first prompt, is a general prompt as explained earlier. So you want to set this to fill the entire image. You can size the area with the parameters down here. If you want the image to be 1024 by 1024, set it at the top here, and also set the width and height to be the same for the first prompt. We could then go through our sub prompts. So switch to index one and start adjusting specific areas here. Now that you have a general understanding of how this works, I will set up the rest of the workflow and then we can adjust the areas and prompts at the end. The setup is a standard flux setup, which I went through in a previous video. I will go through again as a reminder. Add the main dual clip loader. Select clip L and the FP16 safe tensors. It should be downloaded and inserted into this clip folder. Now I'll add the links below if you don't have these. And then connect the dual clip loader to each of these clips. And add the load diffusion model, which will switch out the flux one dev. You can also use a light version of this too. These will be saved in your model folder under unit. And I'll add the weight type of FP8 fast, but this can also be set as default. We then need to add a basic guider where we attach the model and then link up the conditionings. This connects to the big four nodes needed for diffusion generation. The first is the empty latent image, which in essence is a blank image. I will set it to 1024 by 1024, as this is our max image size before upscaling. Next is the random noise, which fills this image. Let's keep it as randomized. Next is the case sampler select. I'll add the dpmpp underscore 2n, as generally works quite well, where you can try out other options. And finally, the basic scheduler. I'll choose simple and I'll put the steps to 20 for now. You can always increase it to up the quality and keep the denoise at one. Link the diffusion model to all these and add the sampler custom advanced.
master knows the appropriate names. They're color coded to make it easier. Finally, add the load BAE, BAE decode, and save image. This trio will make sense of the final generation. So load the flux VAE, which is saved in the VAE folder in your Comp UI, and then connect the samplers together and the VAE. And finally, the image to image. That is all the technical work needed and out the way. Now you can adjust your prompts and areas and it will work. As I mentioned before, it is quite intuitive to use. So in the first prompt, you describe the entire scene. I will start with a rooftop garden atop various buildings in a city with a skyline backdrop that showcases the contrast between nature and urban life. And this covers the entire 1024 by 1024 zone. You can then copy the same prompt below, as this workflow doesn't use any negatives. What is important, however, is to set the strength. Since this is the main prompt, it should be greater than 1. So 1.2 works fine. Let's move to index 1. I will sub-prompt a luxury rooftop garden. I found simple prompts work best for these regions. So using the parameters here, I'll make a rectangle and position it somewhere on the bottom center. I'll keep the strength at 1. Next to index 2. I'll prompt sculptural tower in the background. I'll make this a small vertical rectangle somewhere in the top left. Then reduce the strength to 0 0.9 as it is less important than the previous prompt. Finally, for index 3, I'll add a city background. I'll make the region across the top half of the image. Then change the strength to 0 0.8 since it is the background. You can feel free to flick through the indices and adjust the areas as needed. But for now, I'll run the prompt to see the results. Now you can see that we do indeed have a luxury rooftop garden at the bottom, and there is a tower in the top left, although not too sculptural and may need some adjustments. And then the top half has a city background. There are two buildings added to the size of the image, maybe because I didn't stretch the rooftop garden across the entire width. Or you get the idea, and you can experiment with this as much as you like. Finally, as a bonus, I'll show you a handy note for enhancing these details. There is this great set of CompUI daemon detailers. These use sigmas that enhance flux models, but works with other models too. There are four nodes here, and the lying sigma sampler is the one that we'll be using. This can be done by cloning from GitHub into the custom nodes folder, like we did before. But an easier way is to go to the Comfy UI Manager and install from here, since it is available for a one click install. So just search for Demon Detail. And I already have this installed, so I'll close this down. Then add the Lying Sigma sampler. This is then connected from the case sampler, and then attached to the sampler custom advanced. I'll however make a copy of the sampler custom advanced and the following notes so we can do a comparison. I'll shuffle this over and delete the duplicate I made of the lying sigma and connect this sigma to the custom advanced. I'll deconnect all the other nodes, which have become detached. And the default settings already work well, so let's leave this as it is. Then to compare these images, I'll be using a node by RG3. To split the first image into the first slot and the second one into the other. If you don't have these nodes, go to the manager and install from there like so. You can then hit run. I've forgotten here to connect the guider node, so I'll just do that and run it again. Now if I swipe the comparison node, you can see the differences. The foliage is definitely more sharp and has more details. Even the tower has sharp and cleaner windows, even though the towers are still very ugly in design, but that would have to be edited in the plot. 
Even so, with just one node, you could really bring out the definition of your image generations. Now, instead of relying on text to compose your images, you have great control with the multi-composition nodes, and it's definitely worth trying out. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.